brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that sends 5% of your monthly plan price to your favorite charity. No contracts, nationwide coverage, risk-free guarantee. Learn more at CharityMobile.com. The treatment of Cardinal Pell in Australia by the secular authorities, by the authorities in Rome by extension, because there are a lot of questions about their involvement in the Cardinal Pell mess, has left me very hesitant to assume that any such similar kinds of cases that might emerge in Australia involving priests or the episcopate being taken at face value. It's something to worth remember that the, the in Australia, the authorities there have demonstrated open and severe hostility to the Catholic Church, going after high-profile bishops of all stripes, it seems. Today, we have another story, potentially, of a case like Cardinal Pell. And I say potentially because there is always the possibility that this bishop is actually guilty of what they have said he is. We're dealing with a case of Ted McCarrick kind of offenses here. The 19 of them in the case of this bishop, Bishop Saunders, of the Diocese of Broome. It's, these are the difficult kind of stories to report on because, not just because of the nature of the things that are implicitly hanging over all this, but because of the track record the authorities have here. Their track record is abysmal. Cardinal Pell is an interesting case because he had been involved in looking into Vatican finances before suddenly those things said against him just mysteriously popped up out of nowhere. Thing Details of which were so ridiculous on their face that anybody who has served a mass could see, especially with an archbishop or a cardinal, could tell you that those that what they said Cardinal Pell did was on its face nonsensical. It would not have been possible. It would have taken an overactive imagination to believe it possible or someone completely unfamiliar with the Catholic faith and unfamiliar with how the happenings at a mass happen, especially involving a high-profile prelate like a cardinal or a bishop. Bishops' masses tend to be, when they're available to the public, they tend to be very well packed. And after the mass, people are trying to talk to the bishop in the sacristy, even while he's trying to essentially do the post-mass sort of cleanup that happens to happen. And that's the nature of what happened with Cardinal Pell. What they said he did was at a time when it would not have been possible to do the things he, they said he did. It didn't stop the Australian system from just doing evil things to Cardinal Pell. But his case is in the past, but it looms over everything here. So we now have this story that comes to us from Australia. The Catholic media in Australia haven't reported on this, as far as I can tell, in 18 months. Which is weird. It's a reminder that the Australian media there, or the Australian Catholic media there, are in the hands of the dioceses and their National Bishops Conference. So, we have to rely on secular reporting here, which is again another problem. At least for the main story, part of the story. So, I'm going to make this pitch to anybody in Australia who has the skills and maybe resources to do this. If you are so inclined... Your country could use a, a life site news sort of operation of its own. Something that uh, touches on tr uh, traditionally leaning Catholic news as well as things going on in the church and in the secular world. Sort of like life site news does. They do, they cover the, the news in the United States and Canada and the Catholic Church. I can't give you the resources to do it, but if you have the resources and the skills and are inclined to start a website like that, including eventually doing the kinds of work that John Henry Weston does, being kind of a thorn in the side of the bishops there, if you launch such a website, I will give you some free publicity. I'll use you as a news source for things happening in Australia. That's just my pitch for that, because this reporting here is lacking from the Catholic news side of things. We have to go to... The web, we have to go to the website for abc.net.au, which is uh, one of the major Australian news, secular news sites. And they tell us that this bishop faces 19 allegations of involved in a Ted McCare kind of evil deeds, including with someone far too young to be able to consent to such activities. Now, consent is not something that would make this okay, given that you are, you know, 
we're talking about a bishop here. If he actually did the things they said he's that he has done, then even if it was with an adult, it would not be okay because he's a member of the Episcopate. He has vows that he has taken to not engage in these kinds of activities, especially outside the confines of marriage, which is not a sacrament open to him anyway as a member of the Episcopate. And so here, as we go over the story, the background of the story, he has vociferously said he has not done the things they said he did. Repeatedly, going back for almost two years, he has said repeatedly that he has not done the things they said he has done. That doesn't mean he's actually innocent, but it, he has proclaimed his innocence this entire time. That also means the bishop has entered the plea of not guilty, which means that as I report on this now and in the future, we're going to have to let the process play itself out because after all, everybody deserves a fair, uh, fair chance. Let the facts come out here. Now, let justice be done. So I suggest everybody pray at some point today for Bishop Saunders and going forward that the truth emerge in this process, that justice be done, that if he, if, if he is truly not guilty of these things that they've said he's done, that he be exonerated, that his name be cleared as much as it can be in these kinds of cases. Unfortunately, there's still people who believe Cardinal Pell really is the monster that they made him out to be. But if he is also guilty of these things, despite his uh, pleas to the otherwise, then let justice be done and be done swiftly also in this case. So let's actually, for some background uh, on this, the ABC News website for Australia gave, only gave us details that I've just given you. So we're not going to read from that. We're going to go to the Catholic Leader, which is a Australian Catholic news site. And they give us this headline. Church opens canonical investigation into Bishop Saunders. Now, this is important for background because this was 18 months ago, September of 2022. The Vatican looked into this. And you're going to see the secular authorities had already looked into this and found there was nothing there. So it's weird that suddenly he's facing these allegations again. A little weird, at least from an American's perspective. But let's take a look at the article so we can get understand what the Vatican was looking at. So, quote, The Holy See has initiated a canonical investigation into former broom bishop Christopher Saunders with Brisbane Archbishop Mark Coleridge appointed to oversee the investigation. Bishop Saunders stood aside as Bishop of Broome in March 2020 after media reports that Western Australia police had begun an investigation into allegations of a Ted McCarrick situation. He strongly denies the allegations. At the conclusion of its investigation, Western Australia police confirmed that no charges would be brought against Bishop Saunders. Bishop Saunders later tendered his resignation to Pope Francis, which was accepted in August 2021. A letter being read at Masses in the Diocese of Broome this weekend, signed by Apostolic Administrator Bishop Michael Morrissey and Archbishop Coleridge, says the church investigation, quote, could not happen until the police inquiries ended. The investigation is now underway, the letter states, before indicating it is not known how long the investigation will take place. However, the Vatican's dicastery for the doctrine of the faith, quote, has, groated, has granted an extension beyond the normal three months for such an investigation. The letter explains. Archbishop Coleridge, who has appointed a group of qualified persons to conduct the investigation, has also issued a decree stipulating that Bishop Saunders is to reside outside the Diocese of Broome for the duration of the investigation. The public announcement of the investigation coincides with the time for the first Mass celebrated this weekend in the Diocese of Broome would commence. The Church's protocols, particularly those enshrined in Pope Francis's document Vos Estes Lux Mundi, mean the outcome of a police investigation does not prevent the Church from conducting its own inquiry, Archbishop Coleridge said. I have assembled a team of people who are highly qualified to conduct this investigation in a thorough way, mindful of the particular needs of the people of the Diocese of Broome. Their job will be to gather as best they can all relevant information to pursue truth and justice for everyone involved. Archbishop Coleridge said with the investigation now underway, it would be improper to make additional comments until the outcome could be announced. End quote. That was 18 months ago. And Catholic media has not reported on anything involving Bishop Saunders since then. Unless I missed something, and if I did, please, if you're in Australia, email me a link to it so I can do a follow-up, because this is a strange story. You would think that the Vatican investigation after 18 months would have been, the result of that would have been in the Catholic leader. But it was not. Sometime in the intervening 18 months, the Australian authorities decided to reopen their look at Bishop Saunders. It's a very strange story. And so I would suggest careful discernment in this because our inclination is that whenever somebody is said to have engaged in Ted McCarrick type stuff, to believe that that's true. But Cardinal Pell didn't do those things. 
He was just made an example of. And it happened at a time when there were some weird transfers of financial resources from Vatican City to Australia that he was looking into. Almost as if that was sort of greasing the wheels for the treatment of Cardinal Pell. If you know of anything about this bishop, did he have any... Was he on, did he have any adversarial relationships with other bishops here, especially really important ones? Let me know in the comments, or let me know in an email. This is an interesting story, one we should pay attention to, because any time a bishop faces these kinds of accusations, it is a big deal. Even if, for most of the people watching this video, it's an entire world away from where you're sitting. Let me know what you think of this story in the comments. Do you think my caution on this is warranted? Or should I just jump on board with the, you know, as accusations being just assumed to be true? Either way, keep the bishop in your prayers, and as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.